Hey, Matt, hit that slider that says uppercase there, just below the font selection. <gasps> we got a barcode, baby. Hey guys, Matt and Kyle here to work on a new tool for you guys. Something that is not really new to Lightburn, but probably new to you. And that's the QR code generator and also how to create barcodes that are scannable using Lightburn. So for people who have never used a QR code generator, they're awesome. There's something lots of people use for social media. There are ways for forms of payment and other different ways where people can just connect to something via their phone, right? So it's always handy, it's a great tool to have. And so today we're gonna to show you the three main ways that the QR code generator in the Lightburn tool can be used very quickly and easily to help you make some really cool products. So we are in Lightburn and basically when you come into Lightburn, you're gonna come up here on our nice toolbar, above our toolbar to the tabs, and we are going to look at the tools and we're gonna come down and right here it says create QR code. Boop. And so if you notice, you, you think there's nothing that happened, but come down here with your eyeballs and you will see a blue bar popped up and it says click and drag to create and size a new QR code. If you don't do it, it will go away, but it still works. There are three main ways that this can be used. The first one is called raw content and you'll notice that there's a couple of different things here. We'll get into that in a minute. There's Wi-Fi, which is really cool. You can actually create a Wi-Fi connection QR code. So when people scan it, their phone automatically goes into their settings and connects it to Wi-Fi. And then there is the contact tag, which if you are somebody who's going to Lightburn or you just came to Lightburn, here's the one that I created and it's got my information right there. And it says, if found, please scan and return. So really quick, let's show you what this looks like. So what we'll do is we'll split our screen so that we can see this and we're gonna type in something that we could use. So Kyle, what's something you wanna throw on here? A picture of something. How about lasereverything.net. All right, so we're gonna use it as a link. So lasereverything.net. So we're just testing this to make sure. So this is what should pop up when we scan it. And so we'll resize it just to make sure that we've got it. And so what's gonna happen is we're gonna go back into Lightburn. We're gonna come up here and again, we're gonna go to tools, click and drag, it's already there, click and drag to size a new QR code. And so for raw content, we're gonna put lasereverything.net. Don't really need to mess with variable offsets and error correction and all that, so we'll click OK. Now, the QR code's done. That's it, it's generated. When you go to scan it with iPhone or Android and just your normal camera app, what you're going to get is your QR code, and you'll notice it has an option there to open it in Chrome for me. So it's going to prompt you to open it in the browser because it's a web address, and it registers that. You don't have to go crazy with trying to find different tools or use different websites. It's not even an image, this is a vector. So you can actually resize this to the moon and back and you'll never lose the detail or the edges because it's a vector. And that's one of the great things, he's absolutely right. What's really cool is this can be anything you need it to be. All we had to do was double click it if we wanted to edit it. So we just gave it a quick double click and it lets us open this back up. So if you wanted to make a memory, so like a charm, you can actually put even a picture here. So we come here to this website, we will open the image in a new tab. And again, it's just a website. So we go up here, we copy this, and we come down to here, we'll double click, hit Control V and click OK. And now when we scan this, the same thing that happened before with Kyle is we're gonna scan it, it's gonna give me the option to click it, and then voila. Voila. So if this is something where if you were using like Google image hosting or you had like a file for like a family photo that you guys had taken and you wanted to send out something, maybe even on a Christmas card, it's a really cool way to have um, just quick access to anything you wanna send. It could even be a music video, like a nice Rick roll. The next one, so the Wi-Fi option is really cool. So if you're somewhere where if you were trying to make something, let's say that you are working with a bar, you're working with a hotel, you're working with any type of place that has Wi-Fi, like a B&B &B or even Airbnbs. Coffee shops are super popular for this too. A lot of these places now are actually hiding their network credentials. So just random people passing by can't hop on their network when they're not even a customer to wherever they are. So what you can do is you'll notice Matt is filling in the network name here and you put in the password, whatever it may be. So you'll notice there's an option for hidden network and authentication type. Authentication type is the method in which the network is encrypted or password protected. That's very important, you wanna get that right. 
but hidden network basically means is the network readily being able to be seen by devices looking for network names that are being broadcast? Hiding that network name isn't something you can do through here. It's something that the location has to configure on their Wi-Fi. And it's just another security step. It's a method in which if they just don't want random people trying to connect to their network, they can hide the name of it. And by the way, it does alter. So everything you do does alter. So if you ever wonder how QR codes are set up, I'm not an expert on how, but I can show you just by clicking the hidden network button, it literally looks like almost like it inverts it or something. But the other thing is if I were to add more information here, like you start to see some changes. So that kind of stuff matters. So make sure that you've got that right and there you go so what's really cool is what that looks like in case you're wondering so i click okay and it's the same exact thing so we're going to open up our phone i'll scan it real quick all right and then what happens it takes you to this little screen right here and it's hard to see because the monitor but it says join bod squad network and you can click yes or no and when you click join boom you're on yep so what it does with Android and iOS is that it will identify this like it does the other pieces as what type of QR code it is. So in this case, it's identifying it as a network setting for Wi-Fi or a network connection. So what it's doing is it's connecting you to the portion of your phone that is set to default handle right. those types of connections. And it's prompting you if you want to continue connecting. Yeah, and if you messed up the password, so if you put in a fake password, like if you, the person who is burning this, puts in the wrong passcode, what will happen is it'll still scan and it'll say join Bod Squad Network, but when you go to push it, nothing will happen because you've not given it the correct information it needs to be prompted to join or not. The good news is you can test that really quickly and they'll know. So make sure you have the right password before you burn a hundred of these. The alternative is if they've given you the wrong information, they can take the information that they gave you and Thank update you. it on their end. So it's the correct information because ultimately this is like a finite item. It's not going to change. What can change is the password on their network. So if they change the password on their network, these will be invalidated and then they would need to come to you for an update. All right, so that's how that works. The last one is a contact. So this is really cool if you were trying to make business cards because this is literally a great option for business cards, for any type of tag where you're trying to have an identification because what this does, and it's really neat, I'll show you guys. So we'll fill it in together, Matthew Bodiford, and you can see it changing with every piece of information we put in. One, two, three, four, five, Spaceball, Wayne. And then we got five, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll go put some dashes in there just to make sure that it's entered like a real phone number. Let's connect, right? So whatever you want it to do. If this was a business contact card, for example, that could be your little note to the person that is scanning this. The one thing that you notice is the more information we put in, the more complicated and more dots you start to see in this pattern, which is pretty cool. The more data it has to hold. Yep, and so that's what I was trying to show you guys here on the screen. So we click OK, and the final, you kind of see it make one more quick change. And so what's nice is, again, just opening up my camera, and when I scan it, it says Matthew Bodiford on my screen with a little yellow option. And so, yeah, so very quickly, this generates a contact connector for you, like a contact, and you can add it right to your phone. So it's got my phone number, it's got my email, the URL on my website, my address, everything we just put in there is here, and we can just add me to it. So literally, I got this from my luggage tag, just one of the ones from JDS, and I put, if found, please scan and return. So really quick and easy. Lots of different ideas that that could be really useful for to make you some quick money because these are like a buck, but you could probably charge 10 or 15 bucks for them double sided. This could even be something that you stick on the table at a trade show and people walking by, you don't even have to give out business cards if you didn't want to. You could just have a nice big wooden placard sitting on your tabletop or whatever. And so that's where it's really cool too, to have that in your wallet where you, instead of handing out cards, you can really quickly just let people scan it and move along. So pretty cool. So most of you guys probably know about the QR code generator, but let's look at barcodes. So the very first thing that we need to talk about is your font. All right, so we're gonna go in here 
and we are gonna write the word test. So we're gonna show you guys what doesn't work before we show you what does work. So just so you know, because this is gonna be a really frustrating thing if you don't pay attention. So we type in what we want it to say, and then we're gonna go to our code 39. That is the format. So we've got free three of nine, but if you notice, nothing happened. This isn't a barcode yet. How come, Kyle? It's because it's lowercase. Um, what? So here's a little quick tip. Hey, Matt, hit that slider that says uppercase there, just below the font selection. We got barcode, baby. You're sitting there thinking, we're done. That's awesome. Thanks, Kyle and Matt. You're the best. Show me how it works. To do this, you are going to need to download a barcode scanner. Yeah, so you don't get the convenience of QR codes being more or less a standard that phones can pick up on their own. Barcodes, not so much. We'll give you guys a link to one of the ones that we found for free that works, and there's very limited ads. So it literally is just a scanner that's added to our phone option so you guys can see it. So it's an app on iOS and Android. Now, when I go to scan it right now, Kyle, why is it not working? You told me this would work. Well, you see barcodes, particularly <laughs> code 39 or free three of nine, it has a starting value and an ending value. What that essentially means is it tells the barcode, hey, this is the start and end of a barcode. So if it sees a start and an end back to back, it knows that the following one is a new barcode. What's our special symbol that we have to use? Asterisk. Shift eight, wildcard baby. And then we're gonna yep. do the same thing, test, T-E-S-T. -T. And then because it is an open indicator and a close indicator, we have to put a second one. So we'll put a second Absolutely. one, shift eight. And then what's gonna happen is we will go back up here and we'll take this and we'll change it back to three of nine. So that's the one where it says just T-E-S-T. -E this is the one that has the indicators in it. So you'll notice there's a big difference between the two in length and literally what that is, is the asterisk and the asterisk. So I'm gonna scan the top one first. So when I scan the top one, basically what happens is I get a green mark. And then when I finally do scan the right one, here we go. You can see very easily the word test underneath it. So right there, up on that line right there, you see the word test. And that's it. And so if you were making barcode generators, or if you're going to be generating barcodes for an engrave for a company, which by the way, any type of place that has production, you guys know where you see barcodes all the time. Anything that creates metal, it should connect to a form for them. And so they know what the item number is and all kinds of things like that. So that's where it's really useful for all kinds of purposes, man. So. Definitely, if anybody ever comes to you for that, it'd be really easy. And the other thing that's really great about this is you can use it with variable text marking. A tip when it comes to barcode too is, if it's a customer that you've never worked with before, some different companies will work with different barcode systems. What I would suggest is if they don't know what they work with, generate a sample list and email it to them and ask them if these are valid for their system and it gives them the information that they need too because the beauty about this is you can export those as a PDF or an AI file and just send that over to them and you're good to go. You've done your due diligence. That's essentially your proofing process. And to add to that, going back to my thought a second ago, if you're looking to learn about variable text marking, Alex actually has already made a video that we will link in this video down below where you guys can see how that works. Hopefully this has been something that'll really help you. There's so many products that you yourself can use for your shop and for your social medias and all kinds of things to help people connect with you and your brand. And this is also something that's gonna let you have a variety of tools for your toolbox to help get you some jobs and generate some really unique items.